You've been eating healthy, working out and doing everything right, but that stubborn scale just won't move. Frustration is building and you are seriously contemplating either smashing that scale or throwing it out the window. Sounds familiar? Oh, I weigh the same 293 pounds today that I weighed in grade school. It's enough to make anyone want to give up on their weight loss journey. But before you decide that your metabolism is broken, give it one more shot and stay with me. Today, we are uncovering two major reasons behind your so far unsuccessful weight loss attempts and offer some solution. And this might be just the breakthrough you need. Hello, my dears and welcome. I'm Marina, a registered dietitian, here to guide you on your weight loss journey. I walk this path myself, so I understand the frustration of putting in the work but not seeing the results you deserve. So let's change this today. My diet starts tomorrow. But before we do that, let's remember one crucial thing about weight loss. It all comes down to a calorie deficit. I'm sure you're aware of this, but if we don't achieve calorie deficit, simply meaning burning more calories than our bodies need to maintain its current weight, weight loss will not happen. For the average man, maintaining weight requires around 2,500 calories per day and for the average woman, about 2,000 calories. To create a calorie deficit, you would consume a few hundred calories less than these maintenance levels. This deficit is the key. No magic spells, no shortcuts. Even if you are not consciously counting calories, any weight loss you will experience is because one way or another you've achieved a calorie deficit. Although the concept of calories in versus calories out is straightforward, actually achieving a calorie deficit can be more complicated than it seems because there are many variables that influence both the calories you take in and the calories you burn. And if you are not seeing results, it means something is preventing you from hitting that deficit. Many factors are at play and can hinder or complicate weight loss, including genetics, medical conditions, environmental influences, and psychological factors. However, one of the most common reasons for not losing weight often lie within the nutrition and diet department, so let's start here. A major reason people might not see weight loss results is underestimating their food intake. Many believe they are eating very little, but they may actually be consuming enough calories to maintain their current weight and not for weight loss. This often happens because it's easy to misjudge portion sizes or forget about the extra snacks and small meals throughout the day and also underestimate the energy content of these small bites. I had many clients eating whole, nutritious foods with beautiful diets, but still, the damn scale won't move. Why is this happening? But it turned out a lot of them overlooked minor details. Like the tablespoon of cooking oil, which is nothing, but just one tablespoon adds around 120 calories. Or that one cookie you grab with your coffee where you're so proud for your portion control because it's just one, but still it adds 100 calories to your daily budget. Or that sprinkle of cheese on your salad, which is not really a sprinkle, yet it's still not that much, but it adds 150 calories. These seemingly small additions can easily add up to 300 or 400 extra calories in a day and potentially negating your calorie deficit and your weight loss. And we do have data to support that. Many people who struggle with weight loss might describe their diet as low in calories, but their actual energy intake could be significantly higher than they realize. This discrepancy is usually due to those unaccounted for foods and larger portion sizes and not because of broken metabolism. And don't feel bad, this issue isn't limited to the general populations. Even dietitians can underestimate their food intake, though typically to a lesser extent than non dietitians And ladies, we have it harder. Average women needs around 500 calories less in a day than average men because we have lower percentage of muscles and muscle burn more energy at rest than at work. So for example, 
A younger, active, taller man will need around 2,300 calories to start losing weight, while calorie deficit target for a smaller, older, moderately active woman would be around 1,600 calories or even less if really sedentary. And that's not a lot of food, my ladies. It's not fair. Pair that number with a week of menstrual cravings and intense hunger, and there you have it. Most likely, we really did overshoot our calories. Die, calories, die! And for additional info, calorie calculators we are using to determine our starting point on how many calories a day we need for maintenance and weight loss are estimations. One systematic review found that no single prediction equation that those calculators use provides accurate and precise estimates in all obese adults as errors could exceed 10 to 25%. So, to gain clarity on your actual food intake, consider tracking everything you eat for a while. Use a food diary or calorie tracking app to lock your meals and snacks, which can help you become more aware of portion sizes and hidden calories. Hidden calories often come from ingredients or additions that aren't always obvious, such as cooking oils, salad dressing, sauces and beverages like smoothies or flavored coffee. Or that glass of wine you'll need after you realize you were eating too much. Portion sizes are another crucial aspect to consider. Even with eating nutrient-dense foods, the quantity impacts your calorie intake. For example, a typical trendy breakfast of whole grain bread with a whole avocado and two eggs can add up to approximately 400 to 500 calories. Two handful of nuts as a snack, another 300. And we did not have our lunch yet. 120 calories and 48 calories from fat, what percent is that? If you're not mindful of portion sizes, even if you don't eat any junk food and eat only nutritious foods, you might unintentionally consume more calories than you realize. You could also consider weighing or measuring your food for more accurate estimates. Just pretend you are baking where everything needs to be measured, right? But doing that, don't forget the last step to regularly review your food intake to identify patterns and make adjustments to achieve that crucial deficit. For example, you might find that snacking more frequently when you are tired is linked to inadequate sleep, which can increase hunger and cravings and calories. Similarly, if you are running around all day without eating, you might end up overeating at your next meal due to the heightened hunger. Or, on the other hand, you are cleaning up leftovers from your toddler but not using the bin or fridge. Emotional eating can also play a role with some individuals eating out of boredom or stress and not even knowing how much they actually ate. Recognizing and addressing these dietary habits can be key to managing your calorie intake more effectively. Another major reason that can hinder weight loss efforts is not about the diet and calories in, but rather calories out. We overestimate calories burned through exercise. While it's well understood that physical activity contributes to the daily energy expenditure, we really overshoot the number of calories we burn during workouts. Five calories burned, nice! This misconception can lead to mismatch between perceived and actual calorie deficits. Let me explain further. Total daily energy expenditure is the sum of energy or calories people need in a day to live. There are three main categories that we need energy for. BMR, which is basal metabolic rate and represents the number of calories required to maintain basic psychological functions at rest like breathing, thinking, etc. Then there is TEF, or thermic effect of food, which accounts for the energy used in digesting and processing food. And lastly, there is physical activity, which includes both exercise and non-exercise activities like walking and fidgeting. Research indicates that while planned exercise is a crucial component of physical activity, it typically constitutes a smaller portion of total daily energy expenditure than often assumed.
Our basal metabolic rate burns around 17% of total calories we need, thermic effect of food adds another 10, and 20% is reserved for the activity part. But in that 20%, active exercise such as strength training, running, and others comprise for only 5 to 10%, while remaining percent of that 20 in the activity department are reserved for non exercise activities of daily life. This highlights that in most cases, exercise alone isn't enough for weight loss. You need to pair it with smart eating habits and healthy lifestyle changes to see the real results. But why do we overestimate calories burned through exercise in the first place? There are several factors. Fitness trackers and exercise machines often provide inflated calorie estimates. A study examining the accuracy of various variable devices found that none of the brands studied fell within acceptable accuracy limits for measuring energy expenditure. These devices can overestimate calorie burn by as much as 20 to 30% or even more compared to more precise methods like indirect calorimetry. So, while your fitness watch might claim you burned 500 calories during an aerobics class, the actual number might be closer to half that. Burn the whole calorie. <laughs> Exercising two or three times in a week is a great boost to your health and weight loss journey, but even if you truly burned 500 calories per session, that's only a 1,500 calorie deficit over the course of a week from exercise. To burn off one kilogram of fat, you need roughly a 7 to 8,000 calorie deficit. Exercise contributes, but it's not as much as we think. Then you might think, I've been so good today with my workout, I've got some extra calories left in the bank for that ice cream. Secret junk food time! But this kind of thinking often leads to compensating for the calories burned during exercise by eating more. Studies have even demonstrated this effect showing how perceptions of exercise can influence compensatory eating. In one study, participants exercised on a stationary bike until they burned 120 calories, but were falsely informed that they had either burned 50 or 260 calories. Those who were told they burned 260 calories ended up consuming more food in a subsequent taste test compared to those who were told they burned only 50 calories. Also, there is more sad news. If you start incorporating more vigorous exercise into your routine, you might experience another form of compensation, reduced non-exercise activity. You might feel too tired to walk around or move as your body hurts, literally. Additionally, your basal metabolic rate could slightly decrease due to compensate for the increased activity. The human body is so complex, isn't it? My body is not my own! So, to conclude, creating a calorie deficit solely through exercise is extremely challenging and requires more effort than most people realize. The key is to integrate exercise into a broader strategy that includes mindful eating and overall lifestyle adjustments. To conclude our thoughts, in the pursuit of weight loss, it's easy to become discouraged when the scale doesn't move or fluctuates up and down, which is normal. But this journey is not a linear process. Weight fluctuations, again, are normal, and these daily changes shouldn't discourage you. The number on the scale can be misleading if you focus on it too closely. Instead of focusing on shorter numbers, take a step back and review your dietary habits and weight trends on a weekly and monthly basis. Small, consistent efforts adds up over time, leading to meaningful and lasting change. Understanding concept we've covered today is important, but the real challenge is staying the course when progress seems slow and being patient. Because to lose patience is to lose a battle. Being patient allows you to make necessary adjustments based on a broader view of your progress. Maybe your weight hasn't dropped this week, but your measurements are changing or your clothes are fitting better. Perhaps you discover that your energy levels are higher or you're sleeping better. These are all the signs that your efforts are paying off even if the scale isn't showing it yet. Remember, lasting weight loss is a marathon, not a sprint.
By regularly reassessing your dietary intake, exercise routines, and weight patterns, you can fine-tune your approach and continue moving towards your goal even when progress seems slow. Trust in the process, stay consistent, and above all, be patient with yourself. The results will come, and when they do, they will be well worth the wait, as the saying is true. Patience is bitter, but the fruit is sweet. Thank you for watching, my dear, and remember to stay kind to yourself on this weight loss journey. If you found this information helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more tips and advice on achieving your healthier self. I'm Marina, your registered dietitian, and I'm here with you every step of the way. You got this. See you next time. Bye.